So we are looking at this equation uh, reaction where we are having uh, a system of hydrogen and oxygen atoms where we have NH capital NH uh, number of atoms of hydrogen capital NO atoms of uh, oxygen and they react and then we are considering six products okay. So we could consider a few more products and then the system is going to get a little bit more complicated correspondingly and the, the temperature is going to change the, the final answer is going to change correspondingly so the uh, Accuracy to which you want the temperature depends on how much you want to go through the calculations and therefore you decide on the number of products you want to take right. So what we already saw is these are the atom, atom conservation equations right and then these are the hypothetical hypothetical formation equilibria equation or they are coming from there. So in the last class we wrote actually these expressions for this KPF O KPF H etc. We have now rearranged in such a way that we will now get expressions for NO, NH, NOH and NH2O each of them in terms of NO2 and NH2 okay so effectively we are now recasting everything uh, that is there in the products in terms of only the reference elements okay so the reference elements really is the is key so once you do this you now plug these back in the atom conservation uh, equations right and what are you going to get so you get 2 kp f h 2 o n o to the half n h 2 the n over p to the minus half that is for here plus kp f o h um, NO2 to the half and H2 to the half plus KPF uh, H that is for this um, sorry yeah NH2 is already there I am going to write this towards the end so KP, uh, KPF H NH2 to the half N over P to the half plus 2 N H 2 equal to capital N H right running out of space there so I am going to write the next equation um, here which is not very different now so or difficult now so K P F H 2 O N O 2 to the half N H 2 N or P to the minus half plus for the OH we have KPF uh, OH N O2 to the half N H2 to the half uh, we do not have a N over P uh, for this yes plus uh, uh, then we write for NO and then we put the NO2 uh, later on so we, we can now write this as KPF uh, uh, O it is uh, here so n o2 to the half n over p to the half plus 2 n o2 equals capital n o right so what we what we have now is uh, we actually have two equations okay two equations and explicitly speaking two unknowns the two unknowns being n h2 and n o2 but implicitly we have a n sitting here uh, in, in, in a couple of places and that is a villain it contains all the unknowns right. So it is like you have you really not you have really not eliminated uh, more unknowns than uh, we want therefore all the unknowns are there so we have to do this iteratively okay. So these are uh, 
two equations and uh, two explicit unknowns n h2 and n o2 but also contains contain n uh, which has all the unknowns so uh, which means we adopt a an iterative uh, solution procedure right so this is a bit of a cumbersome process uh, if you are sitting in an exam you you hope that you don't get a question on even one iteration to be manually calculated because it's 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 a, it's a little bit of a nightmare so the first thing you have to do is uh, uh, do a initial guess for the n okay so uh, assume an initial guess for n based on stable stable uh, products okay stable products so um, we now have n h h2 plus half n o o2 gives a uh, half n h h2 o um, plus half I'm sorry half n o minus one fourth n h times o2 if o2 is in excess right so uh, if how much excess we can actually quantify this if half n o is greater than one fourth n h then initial guess uh, for n equal to simply we are essentially looking at this plus this okay so these are the final stable products to expect that means we disregard all the unstable products right and uh, therefore we, we can expect this to be uh, half n h plus half n o minus uh, one fourth n h and uh, that would be one fourth n sub h plus one half n sub o um, yeah for this case this is so this is like a, a fuel lean situation and uh, uh, or or half n h plus uh, uh, I am sorry uh, half, half n h h 2 plus uh, half n o o 2 gives uh, n o amount of h 2 o this is actually doing an algebraic balancing okay so uh, this sort of like interesting instead of a high school way of numerically balancing you do an algebraic balancing right so uh, so half n h minus n o times h2 where h2 is now the x species if uh, if uh, half n h is greater than n o this is the same as saying if one fourth n h was greater than one half n o okay we were comparing halves and quarters there so if you want to do the same thing you can do that this is uh, fuel rich um, this implies initial guess n just add up these these numbers so n o plus uh, n o plus half n h minus n o is uh, simply uh, uh, one, one, one half n h right so you can start with this initial guess for n and then you have to proceed the other problem we, we see is these are actually functions of temperature here 
okay these these and so on right and that is the temperature we are trying to find out okay. So we do not know what the temperature is but we need to take values for these so that is like a big problem that is a huge loop okay. So <clears throat> what we have to do here is uh, there are like about two or three loops that we have to uh, think of um, we also are better off with actually um, so doing this uh, so uh, we we don't know the KPFs because T adiabatic is unknown. These are all evaluated at T adiabatic. In fact, we should specifically say over here uh, right. So uh, therefore outer loop outer iteration loop would be to start assuming assume T L okay so you have to make an assumption you start with uh, some 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 guess value for the T add and so and then uh, so the algo algorithm is uh, now guess T add to guess n 3 calculate n i double prime for um, calculate t add okay by comparing with the uh, RHS of uh, adiabatic flame uh, temperature equation which is essentially the enthalpy balance equation and uh, then you go go around right of course uh, uh, you can you can actually uh, check here check I am sorry uh, between here and here you can check satisfaction of uh, satisfaction of uh, um, state equation or you can say equation of state right. So equation of state is uh, uh, essentially if you now have something like uh, PV equals N or T add. So for the assumed T adiabatic okay if you have now if you have now converged on N i double prime okay um, then you should now get an N that is different from the guess value okay and that final N that you get should satisfy this okay. So uh, that is something that we have not quite used up and therefore you can use this to check and then you, you go through this loop right now it's it's easier said than done because solving this set of equations here is actually pretty nightmarish okay we are looking at um, a uh, highly nonlinear equation so you're looking at uh, products of unknowns and powers of unknowns that are uh, non unity so this is not very easy to solve so this is this is pretty difficult to do to, to begin with and uh, uh, the more the number of uh, products that you assume the more uh, difficult this, these equations are going to get the more the number of atom types okay uh, you will now have more atom conservation equations and finally you will have uh, in fact if you have more atom types you will have more products to consider all right the first place. Uh, so the the hypothetical formation equilibria equations will flare up to as many products you have assumed and you have to now rewrite them and plug them back to as many atom conservation equations as you have the number of atom types so all these things will become much bigger and so it is very difficult to do this 
So, for example, um, for a carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen system, right? Uh, we could assume. the products as products as CO CO2 carbon in gaseous form at these temperatures okay H2 O2 OH N O H N2 N O H2O etc right and uh, so then you have to uh, so th there are some initial guesses that we can also think about so for uh, c n c h n h o n o n n h system right so that means you have a system by which you have n c number of carbon atoms n h number of hydrogen atoms and so on uh, so that means both the reactants are included like if you have oxygen there so oxygen could be figuring out in the hydrocarbon or oxygen separately or both okay everything put together. So this could be like you know uh, if you now consider one of the stable products among these look at how many products we have considered like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 already uh, yeah or, or did I miss anything. H two O two O H N O H N two N O H two O. Yeah, of course. I, I knew I, I, I was missing this. We have a we have to assume carbon solid as well, because that's actually the um, the reference element for carbon gas. Without that, you're going to get stuck, right? So that's about thirteen species. Let me tell you that 13 species is actually not a very high number in reality okay so this is this is um, this is an easy problem <laughs> okay uh, so so okay we are we looking at what what could be a good initial guess right so if you now assume that your stable products are uh, let us say carbon dioxide water um, and uh, let us say nitrogen and uh, of course uh, if, if it is a fuel lean situation you should get some oxygen out if it is a fuel rich situation you might want to get some hydrogen out so I just put a reverse stick to indicate that you will have one of these right. So uh, so if you, if you now do this algebraic balancing you can get something like H2O plus half N N uh, N2 plus half N O minus N C minus one fourth N H O2 okay if Half N O is greater than N C plus one four N H. So it's kind of like this is the combination of the hydrocarbon for which you need to have so much oxygen in excess for a fuel lean combination to assume O two as a final stable product, right? So this is a fuel lean. situation for uh, or okay I will just start with this right there and then say this is could be uh, NCCO2 plus NO minus 2 NC H um, H2O plus half NN N2 that does not change and uh, plus half NH minus 
n o minus 2 n c from h 2 right this is if uh, if uh, half n h is uh, greater than n o minus 2 n c which is supposed to be but n o is uh, much greater than so not uh, greater than or equal to 2 n c right. So we want to have this combination and then this should be less than the half n h this is the fuel rich situation. So if you do this then you can you can now get your initial guess for the n because all you have to do in the, in the fuel lean case is to add n h plus half n h n c plus half n h plus half n n plus this this thing and maybe maybe cancel something and uh, and you now get the total n as the initial guess okay the number of moles is not the same okay so we are now basically looking at um, a initial guess for the total number of moles of the products based on the stable products effectively what you are saying is we should expect these things uh, that is sorry uh, the the uh, n h n o n o h etc to be in small quantities we expect largely the stable products but the other other ones are going to be in small quantities higher the temperature more these will be okay and then they will try to bring down the temperature okay so there is an equilibrium that that gets attained uh, by having more of these and getting the temperature down okay so that's the reason why we are actually starting with an initial guess based on the stable products composition okay uh, so if it's a fuel rich situation you can add up these in order to get your uh, initial guess for the total number of n all right now the point is do we actually have to go through this Herculean task it is you try to do a computer code on this it, it, it would be a fairly good assignment for a course okay so and uh, many times many students uh, who are not spending enough time on this do not succeed okay. so uh, how in the world that uh, people can find the adiabatic flame temperature realistically uh, when uh, it is going to be a Herculean task to write a code to do these things. Uh, so the answer is uh, there are codes available <laughs> okay so most of the time we do not we do not have to sit and do these calculations all the time we use some standard codes that are available so uh, one of the most popular codes is standard computer codes uh, are available as uh, open source okay well I when I say open source um, I typically bother only about getting the executable version do not worry about the source code itself um, so the most uh, popular one to the extent I know is uh, the CEA 2 uh, that is the current version of what is called the CEA uh, that is uh, that uh, the CEA came out in 1996 the precursor to that was uh, the CEC 71 which came up in 1971 and uh, it was published in this uh, the, the CEC 71 uh, was uh, published in this uh, uh, special publication called uh, NASA SP 273 so many times uh, people refer to NASA SP 273 calculations essentially they are talking about uh, a, a latest derivative of this which is the CEA 2 okay so it is it's, uh, it's actually available in the uh, NASA um, Lewis Research Center code um, so you can look look for these and uh, download and so on we can I can uh, I can give you more information about this there is also another one uh, we can look at called Stan Jan uh, and so on so there are there are actually many more code codes than this okay uh, in, in, uh, available you can you can look up look up but effectively uh, in fact I, I want to point out uh, one thing about CEA 2 
it not only gives you things like the adiabatic flame temperature it also gives you uh, um, other things like for example transport properties of the product mixture so the pro if you now have a product mixture you can also calculate um, of course typically you are expected to uh, obtain molecular weight of the mixture for example uh, the uh, ratio of specific heats for the mixture um, uh, and uh, uh, but the but what more this can do is to also get you thermal conductivity um, and uh, viscosity those kinds of information also so it is extremely useful uh, to have uh, this code up and running for uh, most applications that you want to do you, you get into doing some uh, engine calculations or uh, rocket calculations uh, this is almost like the starting point okay you, you have to have this with you for you to be able to do anything more. So um, what I will uh, do later on is uh, to put out some uh, sample calculations in the website into which this uh, video will be uploaded so that uh, we can go through numbers uh, on uh, like let us say you now throw in some CP data like um, uh, polynomial fits or something like that or make an assumption on uh, calorically perfect gas and say constant CP but you need to look at typical numbers for these and so on so you can, you can do this and in fact I can also show you uh, uh, if you assume only the standard products like let us say if you now take methane plus oxygen and give you carbon dioxide and water we can, we can go through that calculation and you will find that the temperature is actually shooting up beyond about 3000 uh, Kelvin but uh, if you now add some more uh, and then let us say you run a CEA2 kind of thing you now have a huge list of uh, species that you have assumed for the products you will find what the temperature is for the same composition of methane and air that you consider and so on. Well uh, so we, we can we can I will I'll, I'll put, put out those kinds of exercises in the website as we, as we go along which we can look at but uh, we have spent a little bit more time than intended on uh, uh, the adiabatic flame temperature calculation. Finally before I uh, close this uh, module uh, I think I should uh, mention something very very uh, basic okay. So one is uh, this is uh, the definition of what is called as equivalence ratio. We did not quite get uh, an opportunity to talk about this because we first talked about what is called as a stoichiometric uh, ratio but then we were diverted uh, at the time by what is meant by um, heats of formation of the products okay because the, the definition of the stoichiometric ratio involved that we have to actually get the uh, st most stable products which have the most negative uh, heats of formation standard heats of formation and then we were diverted into that uh, and, th and that was right that, that is quite correct. So to, to have that happen so um, we have to now get in get the jargon right so we you now talk to the industry people they keep talking about something called the equivalence ratio okay. So the equivalence ratio is, uh, is typically given the symbol phi and uh, this is defined as the uh, fuel fuel air ratio for a given condition so this is given given by fuel air ratio at stoichiometric stoichiometric proportions so in other words you do not really worry about exactly what the stoichiometric fuel air ratio is okay and of course you can also think about what if air is not the oxidizer okay and not, not all of air is oxidizer only the oxygen part of it is typically the oxidizer the nitrogen is like, like an inert uh, does not matter you can look at a fuel oxidizer ratio or fuel air ratio okay and uh, you can now form a equivalence ratio that is uh, like this which means uh, phi equals 1 is uh, stoichiometric stoichiometric and uh, phi uh, less than 1 is fuel fuel lean and uh, phi greater than 1 is uh, fuel rich okay. Now the rocket people like to operate fuel rich whereas the air breathing engines people like to operate fuel lean okay so the uh, rocket people do not really talk about a fuel air ratio they talk about an oxidizer fuel ratio all right. So when you talk about an oxidizer fuel ratio you could write this as oxidizer fuel stoichiometric divided by oxidizer fuel given. So you now invert this because you have inverted your 
numerator and denominator so that this this holds you always have this is something that I used to get confused as a as a student okay do I define it this way or do I define it that way or which way should be it how do I invert and all that stuff do not think about all those things what matters finally is this if your phi is less than 1 it is fuel lean you have to define your phi like that <laughs> okay that is how that is how it works and phi greater than 1 should be fuel rich this is like the uh, mantra uh, all over the world on, the, on, the, on this okay so you do not have to um, think about this at all then you work out how all the other details okay um, um, then I also want to <laughs> emphasize these are mass ratios they are not the number of moles or uh, molecular weight nothing again okay, nothing like that it is actually the mass okay and many times in flow situations you could also use mass flow rates m dots so you can say m dot m dot f divided by m dot a divided by m dot f stoich divided by m dot a stoichiometric all right all those things are permissible but it is all mass ratios okay fine so with this I should uh, stop the, this particular module and uh, let me now get into the next um, topic which is uh, chemical kinetics. Right. So let us now uh, define some so the, keep in mind that we are still in the preliminaries okay we have not got into combustion yet okay so we, we, have, we have to learn I, I told you we needed to learn some thermodynamics we needed to learn some, some chemical kinetics some amount of um, mass transfer uh, leading up to Fick's law and then we will get into some uh, 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 conservation equations to derivation that is when we are actually getting into combustion at the moment not yet but we need these preliminaries. So uh, some definitions first some definitions first is one um, a mass concentration of species I okay what is mass concentration what is meant by mass concentration mass concentration how what does it mean in what way we are looking, we are looking at mass right so mass of the species in the total mixture in, in what of the total mixture is it the mass of the total mass, mixture mass of the total sorry that is the next <laughs> okay so you are looking at mass concentration so what, what would concentration really mean huh? based on volume so you want to say you, you, you now pick a unit volume of, of, of your species of your mixture okay and then uh, you now look at what is the mass that is contained of a particular species in the mixture all right so what is this mass per unit volume density okay so this is something that we actually know <laughs> right so this is this is basically uh, this is given a symbol rho i which is the density okay this is equal to mass of species i in volume of uh, the mixture right I am writing this in a congested manner because we are supposed to know this <laughs> okay so should not have to worry about this or maybe put the equal to sign somewhere here um, and then B because most of chemistry is done in uh, moles okay so we also have now molar concentration concentration of species I which is given a symbol C I C sub C sub I right 
now this is pretty easy game okay so what do we what do we what do we know for ci what how do you how do you design define this not yet huh <laughs> so this is this is basically number of moles number of moles of species i uh, per unit volume so number of uh, pi i per unit volume of the mixture right okay now I want to actually get the mixture density what do I do do I take an average of all the all the species densities rho i can we think about this not yet yeah we want to know the mixture density so what is the mixture density okay you, you you take a you take a unit volume of the mixture as we speak there is air around which is a mixture okay so I will take a unit volume of the, the mixture and then find out what is its mass okay but we know that it is actually composed of many species and each of those species has a mass rho i per in, in that volume because it, we are now saying unit volume right. So if I want to know the total mass of all the species in that unit volume I simply have to add all the masses of the individual species with the denominator being the same that is the volume okay. So if I now split up the denominator for each of those I simply get back the sum of all the densities of individual species as the density of the mixture right. So density of the mixture rho right is equal to sigma i equals 1 to n rho i just have to add do not do any averaging or anything like that all right. So just add all the densities to get the density of the mixture and similarly um, molar concentration of the mixture C is you just have to add the total number of moles that is there per unit volume right. So total number of moles is like number of moles of this species plus number of moles of that species and so on in this volume therefore this is simply going to work out to I equals 1 to N C I that is it okay. And uh, what is the relationship between C I and uh, rho I? One of, one of them is number of moles okay per unit volume and the other one is mass by the per the same unit volume so the volume is pretty much the same for both so the only difference between them is on the one hand you are counting the number of moles the other one you are counting the mass so what is the difference between the number of moles and the mass what is the factor that differs sorry the molecular weight yeah so uh, the molecular weight basically tells you what is the mass per one mole right therefore if you have so many number of moles you need to have so much more mass as the molecular weight therefore the relationship is C i equals rho i divided by W i okay. Now these are things that are kind of confusing uh, to, to begin with if you are not used to there is a reason why I am going through these things uh, rather slowly okay so this where we now say w capital w i is the molecular weight of uh, of uh, species i right the second definition that we want to have and I'll try to use the next panel uh, 2a is mass fraction mass fraction and we use the symbol mass fraction of species i species i we use the symbol y i what do you think is mass fraction now this 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 is pretty indicative okay you can guess these things right so mass fraction is mass of species i 
divided by the total mass of the mixture right. So of course you are not going to take like the mass of species I in this entire room and then divide by the total mass of the species uh, all the species in this entire room you could now basically think I will take a unit volume of the mixture look at how much mass I have of species I look at how much mass I have for the mixture in this unit volume so per unit volume basis which should work just as well okay therefore we could we could say this is uh, um, rho I divided by rho all right now if you now are looking at the contribution of uh, the ith species mass per unit volume to the total mass per unit volume of the mixture then if I add up all of these mass fractions what should I get 1 good so this implies that sigma i equals 1 to n y i equal to 1 and this is going to actually come in pretty handy to us later on because pretty soon uh, okay, coming next week you will have lots of very dirty looking partial differential equations to stare at and one of the one, one set of and then you will have sets of unknowns it is not just unknowns it is like sets of unknowns okay. So we will we'll now look at one equation and say that is actually going from i equals 1 to n therefore there are n equations and there are 3 n unknowns and so on okay. So we will be looking at n and um, n is actually not 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 too small okay so um, and, and we will talk about this okay so n could be of the order of like let us say 10 or 100 <laughs> okay let us about let us say 10 to 100 okay to, to be very modest. So you <laughs> so you are now beginning to look at something somewhere between about 50 equations 500 equations and all those things like 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 just write them <laughs> uh, so uh, y, yi is going to be one set of unknowns right. So in all these things sigma i equals 1 to n y i equal to 1 is going to now, now come, come to us like a big relief because it is a simple nice algebraic equation good old middle school days not even <laughs> high school days okay. So just deal with algebraic equations it is great yeah. So this is going to be one of the equations that we will actively consider uh, among this dirty set of equations later on. Um, so similarly for B we could now say mole fraction of uh, species I okay. So the only thing that we are doing now is we, we know the trick what, what we want to do right. So the only thing that we are doing now is to introduce the standard notation okay so it is given as Xi and as a matter of fact we introduced X as a mole fraction uh, last, last class right when we are looking at uh, the uh, how to do how to relate the partial pressures to the total pressure so uh, xi xi is uh, what do you guess for this ci divided by c okay no no big prizes for this guess huh <laughs> they are getting <laughs> getting there so therefore um, therefore here again we can say sigma i equals 1 to n capital xi equal to 1 right one more and then what is the relationship. relationship is uh, um, the um, xi equal to uh, yi divided by wi divided by sigma i equals 1 to n yi divided by wi all right. So this is the relationship between x and y and this is also pretty important as we will see later on um, there are these uh, mass transfer equations and chemistry chemical kinetic equations that are based on um, molar concentrations and mole fractions whereas when we try to do um, mass conservation we are more interested in mass concentration namely density and uh, mass fractions all right. So on the one hand for the fluid dynamic kind of equations conservation equations of mass momentum energy we will be dealing with mass or, or, or a mass basis whereas for the chemistry and uh, um, and so on we will be dealing with the uh, mole basis molar basis and there this set of equations that is relating the mole fractions to the mass fractions is going to come in handy 
okay we need to have these set of equations in fact what will happen is and I, I tell you this you have to recollect this and I, and I uh, again come back to this we will have to treat both xi's and yi's as unknowns okay so one set of equations that will link the two is this equation this is the set of equations this is actually valid for every species in the mixture right so um, we, we will have this relationship also come up uh, in a big way all right so with these uh, definitions we can now get into some kinetics um, and, and uh, right now what I am going to do is to only bring in some notation okay. So uh, we, we, so we now talk about what is called the law of, uh, law of mass action right and uh, the axiom that you are working with is um, atoms or atoms and molecules cannot react unless they collide okay there are exceptions to this okay there are exceptions like for example you can heat a molecule and then it starts vibrating and, and dissociating and so on so it does not really collide with any other molecule it can also be photosens photosensitive that means like light radiation or electromagnetic radiation can create these kinds of vibrations and stuff so uh, there are exceptions but at the moment let us not worry about this um, and we have to start with this axiom. Now strictly speaking we need to actually get into the details of this axiom as in how the collisions happen and so on only when you are getting down to something like a kinetic theory uh, level okay or kinetic theory of gases level or even further if you want to get into something like quantum statistical mechanics. So if you, if you have to now work out the collisions how they happen and what is the statistics of these collisions and how the energy exchange happens and all those things we would not do any of those things here thankfully right I, I just tried to scare you there okay. Uh, what we are going to do is to adopt a continuum approach. So in a continuum approach what you essentially mean is at a particular point in the flow field you have a nicely defined density concentration uh, mole fraction mass fraction all these things how you got that is not your problem <laughs> okay it is it is there again you can, you can assume that it is there. So with this we will actually be looking for laws that, that are just taken for granted at the continuum level rather than derived from. Uh, uh, molecular level so um, the, the, the thing that we were basically looking at is let us let us start with an example example is let us suppose that you now have H2 plus half O2 gives uh, H2O um, here with this we can write um, a change in the number of moles of uh, H2 okay and then we divide this by negative 1 to indicate that this change is in the manner of depleting this, uh, this, this number and uh, similarly we now write this as uh, change in the number of moles of O2 divided by minus half to indicate that you have a half a mole that goes for every 1 mole of hydrogen and it goes therefore you have negative okay so this negative indicates depletion and the half of the 1 indicates the coefficient there and that is equal to uh, 1 for every mole of hydrogen that is produced you have plus 1 mole of hydrogen water that is produced right. So this is actually 3 equations yeah so you can now look at this is one equation this is another equation and these 2 together is another equation each of these 3 equations effectively relates what should be the change in the number of moles of hydrogen for a corresponding change in the number of moles of oxygen and, and so on okay and the signs effectively tell you whether they are getting depleted versus getting produced okay. So if you can write this like this then in general in general we can write dn1 uh, divided by nu i double prime minus nu i single prime uh, 
plus equal to dn2 divided by um, sorry nu1 nu2 double prime minus nu nu2 single prime etc that is like you can write dni nu i double prime minus nu i single prime where we had this notation um, or we can say sigma i equals 1 to n nu i single prime mi gives sigma i equals 1 to n nu i double prime mi. So this is like a generalization of what we just went through and let us now call this d psi where psi is what is called as a degree of advancement of the reaction. Let me stop here for the day.